I have the old title for uh, quite a long time, uh, Sean did a bit. It's just about uh, the P3 kind of convoluted parsing library, which is something I've been working on. So um, uh, I'll just list the kind of main features. So it's a parsing library, so you can kind of uh, do interactive uh, parser development. Uh, it can handle all context free grammars, so including left recursive uh, context free grammars. Uh, so scannerless, uh, or you can use Alexa if you want. Uh, there's a good theoretical basis, so it's sound and complete, whatever that means. Uh, it's got good performance for a general parser. Uh, it can handle some fancy examples. So there's an anti-feature, which is that um, it's nowhere near as fast as uh, a deterministic parser, so, uh, something like OCaml Yak. So if you really, really want to uh, parse things quickly, you have to basically use a deterministic parser. So, uh, so in this talk, I want to kind of look at some of the examples uh, uh, Theory. So, uh, should I just make that a bit bigger? Uh, right, so, uh, so here's a kind of uh, example for example. E goes to E, 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 or uh, like a single character one, or X, which is the empty string. Uh, so, this, is, this basically passes a sequence of ones. So, here's, uh, here's the uh, kind of code for that. Uh, so, you've got the usual combinators, uh, which are this uh, sequential combinator, and uh, the alternative combinators here. Uh, if you want to pass the empty string, it's something like this, or it's this, or you've got this kind of recursive uh, structure here. So, uh, so this is left recursive, highly ambiguous. Uh, there's an infinite number of pass trees, even when the uh, empty string is given as an input. So this is kind of like, in some ways, uh, a kind of bad grammar. Uh, so I just have to briefly kind of talk about what completeness means. So uh, naively, you'd want completeness to mean that all the pass trees are returned. Uh, but if there's an infinite number of pass trees, uh, Returning them in a list is somewhat difficult. So uh, for a given grammar, it turns out you can define a class of good parse trees. Uh, so this is like, a, a, the class is finite. So in some sense, uh, you can get to uh, termination. But uh, it's, uh, there's possibly exponentially many uh, good parse trees. Uh, so it turns out that good parse trees are basically all you need, all you should be interested in. So uh, I'm going to, uh, that's in a kind of another talk. Uh, and completeness basically means all good parse trees are returned. So uh, that's uh, the uh, meaning of complete for these parsers. So here's, here's, uh, here's an example which uh, basically uh, the same grammar and it uh, returns parse trees. So for example, if you just pass the empty string, it's going to return a leaf uh, with the empty string. If you pass a single character one, it's going to uh, kind of return uh, a leaf uh, annotated with one. Otherwise, you're going to return a node consisting of uh, the three uh, children. Basically. Uh, so this is a highly ambiguous grammar. Um, uh, if you run this, uh, you get uh, kind of uh, exponentially uh, many results. So for instance, here's the number of results. So after four, you're up to 150. If you give it an input uh, of a uh, sequence of ones of length 19, you've got uh, this many uh, pass trees. So obviously, this is not computable, right? So there's too many pass trees, so we can't do this. Uh, computing results for inputs of size 19 or larger is not feasible. So even about 8 or 9, it becomes, you know, you just can't do this, basically. So uh, the exponential number of results means uh, that uh, we return means that this must take at least an exponential amount of time. So there's no getting around that, basically. Uh, but I do just want to make a kind of conceptual distinction. So parsing is not applying the action. So parsing is different from applying the action. So parsing, everything about parsing can be done in polynomial time. Uh, the results uh, can be stored in polynomial space, so uh, everything about that is kind of feasible. When it comes to applying the actions, of course, it depends on exactly what the actions are, but um, in this previous example, there's an exponential number of pass trees, that's going to take an exponential uh, amount of time, so uh, that's where the badness kind of sets in in some sense. Uh, so here's another example. Uh, what I've done here is the same grammar, e goes to e, e, or more reps. Uh, so here I'm just going to count uh, the length of the input, so uh, the empty string is like a zero. If I pass a one, it's like a one. Otherwise, I just take the uh, sub parses and I add, uh, I add the lengths together to, uh, to get the result. So if I give it an input of consisting of 19 character uh, ones, it's basically going to return uh, the result 19. Uh, so, uh, so the semantics is as before, so we're just going to compute the actions over all the possible uh, pass trees. Uh, so a slight difference is that there's only one uh, result here. So, um, yeah, so it turns out uh, we're applying the actions over all the pass trees, so it takes an exponential amount of time. But we might kind of wonder, does it, does it need to uh, take an exponential amount of time? So uh, here's, uh, here's another example. 
Uh, so the only change here is that we've introduced a, a hash table here, and uh, we've got this kind of little memorization thing here. So this means um, uh, you can't do this with any other parser. So this is supposed to be like an example that you can't do uh, with anything else, basically. So uh, yeah, so it turns out that with memorization, uh, everything's uh, everything's great, basically. So uh, inputs of even length 100 just take a few seconds to process and return a single result. So it's this distinction between um, uh, yeah, between actions and parsing. So the point is, uh, so before we said, you know, uh, length 19 was impossible, but now, uh, you, know, kind of, you know, very, very, very long inputs uh, can be done with uh, kind of relatively feasibly. Uh, so the point is that the library is uh, designed to ensure optimal performance at each stage. So you can write highly ambiguous grammars. So the parsing is still O N cubed, and uh, when you're applying actions, if you use memorization like this then uh, basically you could kind of get the best behavior that uh, you could uh, ask for. So, uh, so it's a simple semantics. So in your head, you basically think this is computing actions over all of the possible pass trees. Uh, so of course, there are exponentially many pass trees. But the point is, it doesn't have to take an exponential amount of time. So that's, the, that's the, well, one of the features of the library. And what this means in practice is that uh, providing your actions don't cause exponentially many results to be returned, your performance is actually, uh, is often pretty reasonable. So, um, yeah, I'll just, give, uh, I'll just give another example to kind of uh, emphasize uh, the same kind of point. Uh, so arithmetic uh, expressions, so here we go. Uh, so this is a, a fairly simple grammar. So when we want to pass that grammar, we often have to fiddle about with it. Uh, because the traditional tools can't handle it. So we, we can either kind of mess with the grammar, basically to encode associativity and precedence. Uh, another approach, uh, so this is so Camel Yap and uh, lots of other tools, is to add associativity and precedence directly to the parser. Um, uh, so for instance here you're saying multiply has uh, higher precedence than plus and uh, all of these things associated with the left, for example. So P3, uh, which is a combination parsing library, can do all of these things, but uh, it also allows uh, another approach, which probably uh, you don't get with any of these other, uh, these other tools. So uh, the general approach is basically to just rewrite pass trees, or basically just throw away the ones that you don't want. So, so the following example is for a right associative plus and times, uh, we're going to return an option, uh, some if the pass is acceptable and none if the pass is not acceptable. So for example, if we see the input 1 times 2 plus 3, we really want this to be passed as 1 times 2 plus 3, not 1 times 2 plus 3. So basically, if we see if we're parsing at times, uh, and we see a plus in the second argument, uh, which is this one here, then we, can th uh, we just throw it away, we just return a none instead. And uh, so you can do the similar thing with uh, all of the other things that you don't want, uh, for the associativity and precedent and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so this approach uh, kind of it directly encodes which results are acceptable and not acceptable. Uh, so traditionally you wouldn't think of doing this because uh, there's exponentially many pass trees. If you have to generate them all and then throw some away, clearly that's going to take a, a long time. Uh, but here, uh, of course, it is possible because you're not actually generating all of these pass trees. So the semantics is that you're uh, generating all the pass trees, but in fact uh, it turns out that um, this is all perfectly doable, it's all fine. Uh, so this is another example. So uh, this is on a different theme. It's about a uh, modular combination of parsers. So uh, basically, if you consider a, a class of grammars X, so X could be LA, LR1, or LR1, or something like that. So combining two uh, LR1 grammars doesn't give you an LR1 grammar in general. So it's kind of <coughs> difficult to modularly specify and combine grammars from these classes without moving to uh, some bigger class. So by way of contrast, two context-free grammars can be combined to form a context-free grammar. So, uh, <laughs> so if you're good to go with kind of specifying these things, modulating, combining them. So uh, here's an example, which is basically uh, we're going to have three parsers: one for arithmetic, one for Boolean expressions, one for the Lambda calculus, uh, and then we're going to kind of so they work independently, and then we're going to kind of just combine them all and get a parser for the uh, combined language. So. So we start off basically, we're just going to uh, redefine the sequential combinator. Uh, so it takes two parsers, x and y, and it allows some white space uh, between them. So in the textual examples like in the end, we've got white space basically. So arithmetic expressions uh, look like this. So uh, we've got a plus, so it's an arithmetic expression, followed by a plus, followed by an arithmetic expression. Same thing for minus, numbers, brackets. 
So the, uh, the different thing is we've got like a helper parser here. So the helper parser is basically the thing that parses anything else in some sense. Uh, so we can do the same thing for Boolean expressions, Lambda expressions. So here's the parser for Lambda expressions. So we might have a, a backslash followed by a variable followed by the body of the Lambda. Or we might have an application or a variable or a bracket. And again, we've got this helper parser. So uh, the point is we can use these parsers separately uh, so you just make the helper parser just something that doesn't pass anything at all. Or we can kind of combine uh, all of these three separate parsers to form a parser for the union of the languages. So here we've got the pass u for the union. So l is just uh, this pass l that we've seen before. a and b are pass a and pass b. So the question is what's a helper function? It's just uh, the alternative, the combination of l and a and b basically. The helper pass is the thing that passes the rest of the, the stuff that you don't know about, pass into pass L and pass A and pass B, is the combination of all of these passes. So uh, we don't have to worry about uh, kind of termination, so then we can define an evaluator in the usual way, and then finally we combine the parser and the evaluator to get something like this. So we're going to run this parser, here's the parser, so it's a memoized version of that definition I just showed, and we uh, evaluate in the empty environment. And uh, yeah, so this is a parser that's able to pass the combination of all of these three languages. So here's the kind of textual example. We've got the Y combinator. So we've got the sigma function. So sigma 5 is 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. And uh, we uh, apply Y to sigma and then reply, uh, apply that to 5. And then we pass and evaluate that to get back a single answer. So uh, it's worth noting, you, you know, so, so this expression, for example, it's lambda calculus. And then it contains kind of Boolean stuff, and then it contains uh, uh, arithmetic expressions, and then inside the arithmetic expressions, there's uh, function application and so on and so forth. So there's this kind of infinitely recursive kind of nesting of uh, these parsers. Okay, so uh, just briefly, uh, this is the performance. I compared it to Happy. Uh, so for instance, there uh, are five sample grammars. So um, on two of them, P3 is kind of much better. So this is kind of laughably kind of better, basically. So on, on another two, P3 is better, but only by a factor of 10 or so. And on the final one, happy, uh, it loops somehow. So there's some kind of bug in uh, happy, basically. Uh, so the back end early part, it took an immense amount of time to uh, get to this stage, basically. So yeah, so the back end early part is pretty good, I would say. OK, so the conclusion is basically it works. Uh, you can use it. Uh, I'm not so happy with some of the combinator interface. Um, I'm also working to improve the real world performance uh, even further. Uh, so hopefully uh, there's been a few things here that uh, maybe you haven't seen with other uh, parsers. Um, a long term aim is uh, you know, to verify uh, correct parsing and performance. <coughs> okay, thanks so much. So if you want flexibility, um, so I mean this is a parsing slide. So let me refine my question. Suppose I know absolutely nothing about grammars and parsing technology, yeah. and I know applications like parsing a function, a programming language, or uh, it, 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 so it, the, your example with uh, arithmetic uh, expressions was reasonably interesting. So which kind of applications would you recommend that for? Uh, what, why do you typically need the flexibility of schemes? Uh, this example, well, this, I don't know. Well, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, the end was to have this kind of ultimate level of flexibility, basically. So, I mean, you can't do a lot of these things with memory. But the trade-off is you don't get the speed.